I tonight. We saw one of our police that guard the compound taking pictures. Really? This was not uh, an angry mob with a few pitchforks, torches, guns. They were watching from inside. They were watching all the exits. Now here's the, ex the explanation that is the official one from the White House. Okay, see if this makes sense to you. We're in reaction to a video that had spread to the region. At Benghazi? Uh, what happened we, we Benghazi certainly don't know. We don't know otherwise. Uh, the, you know, we have no uh, information to suggest that it was a pre-planned uh, attack. Uh, the unrest we've seen around the region has been in reaction to uh, a video that uh, Muslims, many Muslims, find offensive. And while the violence is uh, reprehensible and unjustified, uh, it is not a reaction to the 9-11 anniversary that we know of or to uh, U.S. policy. The American people have got to know if their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. U.S. Ambassador Stu uh, Susan Rice said this. What sparked the recent violence was the airing on the Internet of a very hateful, very offensive video. We are of the view that uh, this is not an expression of hostility in the broadest sense towards okay. the United States. Got it. Uh, so we, they're very clear. They're all out on record. This is about the video. It had nothing to do with anything else. Forget about anything else. Focus on the video, which is exactly what the mother, Muslim Brotherhood wants you to do because they're attacking our freedom of speech. So the White House is saying, focus on the video. Why? There's too many questions. That, the explanation flies in the face of the obvious facts. Okay, so now Alan West, he fires back. But when I listened to the UN Ambassador Susan Rice today, uh, several words came to mind. Uh, asinine, naive, <laughs> inept, incompetent, and borderline ignorant. Okay. Now I trust Alan West's military experience, um, but he's, I mean, that was harsh. So let's get down to somebody that maybe has no reason to say the president is lying to you. How about the guy who certainly doesn't want to look like his country is overrun by rebels that are going to kill all Americans? The president, the new president of Libya. Here's what he said, quote, the idea that this criminal and cowardly act was spontaneous protest that just spun out of control is completely unfounded and preposterous. We firmly believe this was a pre-calculated, pre-planned attack that was carried out specifically to attack the U.S. consulate. Got it? See, there's a million questions that have to be asked that the media is not asking. They're not asking. They're not asking. Why was the ambassador in Bengali in the first place? How often does he go there? It's time for answers to these questions. I'll give you these questions and then I'll give you my hypothesis, which I believe is probably pretty darn right on the money. And you tell me if it's the crime or the cover up. Back in a minute. Him out because he's a hero. Right. And he's a hero to people like the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Muslim Brotherhood wants him out because he's one of theirs. And I think that that's what has to be said. But if that's what has to be said, we have to understand that when, when the blind sheikh didn't get the job done, they sent in Al-Qaeda. Okay, so when we're talking about who they want out, first of all, if he doesn't get released, I, you, can, you can just bet there's going to be some act of terrorism to cause that to happen or something that's going to cause Do you think he'll be released? Uh, yes, I do. You think he'll be released? Yes. You think he'll be released? After the election, yes. You think he'll be released? I do. Okay, let me let's start it again. If Romney wins, do you think he'll be released? Yes. If Romney wins, do you think he'll be released? Yes. If no. Romney wins? Not no. By, not by Romney. Not by Romney, no. Well, in between the election. Oh, in between yeah. the election. Well, that, Holy yes, cow. Yes, that's, a, that's, a cons that's a big problem. The 10 weeks after the election are a significant problem. This panel, um, back in August 3rd, said that there would be some sort of terrorist strike that would bring this to a head, and you've just witnessed it. Now, you're being set up, America. Your freedom of speech is being set up, and it's being set up all over the world. If you... If you say somebody who on YouTube can't make a video that's offensive to somebody else, 
You stop everything. Freedom of speech is dead. The First Amendment is over. That's what's happening here. That's what, the, that's what this is really all about. It's also about the blind sheik. But I think there's something else. And I want to, I want to take you here. How often was the ambassador in Benghazi? Benghazi is like, if, it's like me saying, hey, you want to come with me to Los Angeles? Great, let's go to Compton. You're not going to Benghazi. Benghazi is the worst of the worst. That's where all of the radicals are. This is ground zero for Al-Qaeda and all of the radicals. Okay. What was the consulate like? The consulate, you know, you hear consulate and you think that there's something special. It wasn't. It was a rented house. That's all that was. I mean, they, they talked about, you know, it had bars on the window. Well, so, so do some of the best liquor stores in Detroit. Um, was there any warning? This is important. Was there any warning? The answer uh, from many sources is yes. Were they put on high alert? The answer there is no. So is the report that nothing was done accurate? Who was on protective detail? This is so important. Who were the guys that were standing next to the ambassador? Who were they? What were they doing in the area of Benghazi? Why did they spontaneous crowds have RPGs and laser accurate mortar fire? That doesn't make sense to you. Are you walking down the street and you're like, hey, what are you going to do tonight? I don't know, but I brought my RPG. Why was the most important person there, the ambassador, left for dead while everybody else made it out? Who is this ambassador? Why did the White House warn us? Uh, why didn't the White House warn us about the movie? Why didn't we hear about that? It came out in June. Okay, so let me take you, let me take you through this because these questions aren't being asked. And they're not being asked because I think when you start to look in them, the fairy tale that this administration is telling begins to fall apart rapidly. So let's tell the story a different way because I've met with um, several people who know these things um, and I asked them, give me what you can. Tell me what you can tell me. All right, here's what we do know. Ambassador Chris Stevens had just returned to Libya after traveling to Germany, Austria, and Sweden. So he comes, he flies back into the country. We can't get the information of where he landed or where he went first. We know that the U.S. Embassy security staff decides, trip to Benghazi, hey, the, you, you're good. Even though 48 hours prior to the attacks, the State Department is reportedly given credible information that the American embassies may be targeted. He wasn't in a safer place. They were sending him to a much worse place. Why were there no warnings given by the State Department to put the diplomats on lockdown? And look, I, uh, I, you probably already know this. I travel in an armored car, okay? Whenever you see anybody traveling in an armored car, or a, I mean an official, they are always in an armored SUV. The world is a very dangerous place. And our, our, our ambassadors, that's the way they travel especially if you're going into a hot zone, especially if you're the ambassador of a war zone. Here's the car for the ambassador. There it is. I have news for you. That's not an armored car, okay? Why, why was he traveling in this car, not armored, at this time in the worst place? He shouldn't have been traveling there in the first place. Why didn't he have an advanced team? I travel with an advanced team. I'm not in a war zone. Why isn't somebody there just checking on it, seeing where are you going, what's happening in the area? He, he travels with two or three security people. Okay, they're traveling into something that um, is not being described properly in the news. I think it looks a little more like what I'm about to describe to you. Two of the men that died in that attack, they told us at first they were, um, they were um, SEALs. I'm sorry, Marines. This is, this, is what, this is what our ambassadors drive in. And when they go under the ground, they land and they're going into an area, their detail puts them in here. And they're Marines or they're State Department. But State Department um, protective detail. We were told first that they were Marines. Now we find out that they're Navy SEALs. 
But when we did our investigation into one of them, we found an interview that one of them gave just before his death. And he said he was, quote, on an intelligence mission. Do we have this? On an intelligence mission to round up dangerous weapons in the war-torn nation. Okay, protective details, that's not what they do. They, they don't go looking for shoulder-fired surface-to-air missiles. They don't go in and try to find Libyan extremists. They don't do that. They are to protect the ambassador. Who does that is a former Navy SEAL who's now on a CIA mission. Now this isn't is stated in that interview, but it can clearly be inferred that they are rounding up any old weapons, not any old, any old weapons that we provided. Remember, it was just last year that the Obama administration declared it would help the rebel forces in Libya, and somebody brokered a deal in Benghazi to give them the weapons. Obama himself was considering supplying them with weapons. Here he is. Are you ruling out U.S. military hardware assistance? I'm not ruling it out, but I'm also not ruling it in. We're still making an assessment. Mm -hmm. um, they ruled it in. Obama ended up giving Libyan rebels um, aid, um, $25 million, million in aid, but of course it came with a strict, hey, don't go buying bad weapons with this, guys. It's just for food. Uh-huh. I'm sure it has a sticky note on it. We've reported before that the Libyan rebels, we took them seriously. The White House didn't, and I remember saying for a long time, we are arming al-Qaeda. It wasn't long after that that reports surfaced that we may be on the same side as al-Qaeda who wanted to get rid of Gaddafi just as badly, apparently, as we did. The Libyan rebel leader said that he had many members of al-Qaeda fighting on the front lines with him. We reported this to you. The rebel leader admitted that he himself fought against the United States in Afghanistan before being captured in 2002. We had him in custody, and then we released him. So we know these people are not our friends, and history has taught us this. Yet we are told to believe that Ambassador Stevens, in a story in the New York Times, just loved and had a heart for the regular Libyan people. He was a regular guy. You know, he, okay, at times, according to the story, he snuck into war-torn countries on cargo ships in the middle of the night, you know. And, and he also goes into really bad areas at night, riding around in non-armored cars, with CIA agents. Oh, and he was a teacher in the mountains of Morocco who traveled around, you know, Europe an awful lot. Uh huh. Boy, that sure sounds like your average pencil pusher diplomat, doesn't it? CIA is what it sounds like to me. And the security guys. Well, let me say that I have a couple of guys on my detail that have worked for the State Department before. And when I said, hey, did you guys, what about the finding weapons and stuff? They thought I was crazy. They said, that's not what you do if you're on a security detail. Yeah, yeah. But what if I told you the guy who did it said that's what he did, and he was, you know, guarding. They all stopped and looked and said, wait, wait. That, hmm? This is what the CIA operatives do. So let me draw another hypothesis. Stevens is not just your kindly, friendly neighborhood ambassador. He was the CIA weapons dealer in the region. He, I believe, probably was the guy that helped make that deal. Now, that may not be right, but it is certainly more plausible than, oh, he, you know, he just got caught up. He wanted to go shake the hands of children in a really dangerous area in the middle of the night. And he didn't know that people watched a crappily edited, non-watched YouTube video, and it just erupted. Really? The 9-11 thing, it was just a coincidence. Uh-huh. Okay, so here we are going up to an election, and the Middle East is starting to melt down, and the U.S. government is needing to look into the missiles, because uh, they don't want any missiles. Where did all those missiles go? Got to find out who has them, because God forbid we find out who supplied them to the terrorists. So... These guys go and they find a cache of surface-to-air missiles. Maybe, I don't know what happens, maybe they have to meet and they say, no, no, we meet with the guy who made the deal. These are the same missiles that we would supply during the revolution to take out the aircraft of Gaddafi. The agents are forced to call in the ambassador, our CIA weapons dealer, and he flies in on short notice. He gets into an unmarked, 
unarmored car to not draw attention and he goes to meet with them. Somehow or another, the meeting or something along the way goes south and they have to take him to the closest safe house, which ends up being a poorly secured consulate building that is brand new with bars on the window. Uh-huh. It's nothing more than a rental house. This is when Sean Smith sends out the message. He doesn't call the White House or the State Department because he's not a State Department guy. He has to send a message. So he, what does he do? He then goes online to the gaming community. And he goes online to, to a gaming website and he says, people are surrounding us and taking pictures of the building. We're in a safe house in Benghazi. I hope we get out alive. Now, do you really believe this guy, a Navy SEAL, suddenly has the urge to do some online gaming when people are watching the house and they're in trouble? No. C-I-A. Message, get us out of here. Everyone is reporting that Sean Smith posted this. His warning makes it painfully obvious that attacks were planned, not to mention the powerful and precise nature of the attacks. So, which scenario do you think is more plausible? That a YouTube video with only 40,000 views, which was much lower than that, that, that 40,000 views, that's after the attack on 9-11. That that caused this spontaneous attack or the bad guys in Benghazi followed the ambassador in. We're going to kill him in the CIA agents. And then to draw them out, they watched the exits and waited and then called their other buddies and say, go do a protest. Got to get that. Got to got to smoke them out, as George Bush used to say. Now, I don't know if this is the case. I don't have the full resources of ABC, CBS, NBC News. But I know it's much more likely than a spontaneous ragtag protesters pulling off a high level power assault. Will the media, the press, press the Obama administration on what appears to be a blatant cover up? What are they covering? Or will they allow it to slide? You see, I believe Americans need to know if their president is a crook. Will the media press the Obama administration on the mission to recover weapons in Libya? I mean, can you imagine a scandal that if it were to come out that Obama supplied the terrorists, our enemies, with weapons to attack and kill our own embassy and ambassador? Can you imagine if it would come out that our State Department would actually negotiate with Egypt after a terrorist attack to release the blind sheik? Hmm. Probably the Libya part's going to have to just continue to imagine it. And I mean, unless someone in the mainstream media finds, oh, I don't know, a spine and a desire for the truth. Right now, they don't have it. The truth lives here. Spread the message. The Blaze TV.